hive cities. Outside lie the ruins of a world pillaged for its resources. Toxic air, radiation, and storms of ash roam a wasteland that hasn't seen the sun in 5,000 years. Like tumors on a dying animal, massive hive cities burst from the surface. Bigger than mountain ranges, these man-made colossi even breach the atmosphere itself, their highest spires out amongst the stars. But below, in the crumbling bowels of ancient habs and dripping toxic sumps, men war for survival and riches. Welcome to the Underhive. <laughs> The Warhammer 40k universe has always been more about the armies of the Imperium than its citizens. Back in the 90s though, there was a game that came out that highlighted the evil, wrongdoing criminals of the Underhive. In the nearly 30 years since it was created, this game has gone by many names. It's always been loosely based on the rules for Warhammer 40,000 and has provided an interesting change from the mass combat system that's so known and loved across the world today. Today, with the launch of Shadow War Armageddon, we're going to be taking a look at the ongoing history of wars in the Underhive. Published in 1990, originally released as a six-part series in White Dwarf Magazine, Confrontation is the original game of gang warfare by Games Workshop. It was featured in White Dwarf, issues 130 through 132. Those first three issues had the background, gang creation system, and the setting of the world of Necromunda. White Dwarf's 137, 138, and 142 gave you the game mechanics, campaign rules, and of course, all the weapons and equipment. It was supported by a wide range of models during the Rogue Trader period. Confrontation had nine gangs in all, and the gangs were at this stage more affiliated with a style than a particular house or background. The clan gangs, Powerful family houses, brat gangs, the rich kids that lived up spire, tech gangs, the industrial house gangs that had better equipment and technology, scavy gangs, the homeless dwellers of below the uh, wall in the underhive, nomad gangs living outside the hide itself in the ash wastes, undercity gangs who were the scum and criminals that would inhabit the bars and the seedier parts of hive primus, the palatine hive, mutant gangs, monsters and those affected by the warp. Psyker gangs who'd gone rogue and left the Imperial Psyker Academies, and Venator gangs, bounty hunters, ostensibly there to keep the peace, but also out for fame and fortune. These themes carried into the next edition and were much more fleshed out in the story for the second edition called Necromunda. Published in 1995, Necromunda was the first time a standalone 40k skirmish game was released as a full box set. It came with a full card and plastic train set up in the box, gantries, walkways and bulkheads, and a mine head. Two multi-part plastic gangs were provided, Orlocks and Goliaths, with weapon options, different guns, pistols and assault weapons, to be armed in a variety of ways. It used the core rules from 2nd edition Warhammer 40k as a basis and was set in Hive Primus, the seat of planetary rule and royalty, on Necromunda in the industrial heart of the Imperium. Necromunda in the second edition was also supported by a full range of models, extensive ranges for all six of the houses that came in the starter set, as well as four new gangs in the supplement Outlanders and Hired Guns Galore. It also had its own magazine called Gang War, which provided new ways to play the game, scenarios, kit-bashed house rules, and all kinds of cool add-ons to take the game both inside and outside the hive. Published in 2003, Necromunda Underhive was one of the launch titles for the short-lived Fanatic game studio at GW. A studio within a studio, it was headed by Jervis Johnson, and their mandate was to keep alive, support, and add new things for the great games of the 90s and early 2000s that had been beloved by fans but were no longer available in stores. Printed as a standalone book, 
The new edition of Necromunda did away with some of the accessories of the previous edition, all the cardboard, weird dice, and things that weren't necessarily available in current 40k. It was supported by new models for gangs in an optional weapon format where the hands were no longer attached and you can equip them in a variety of ways as opposed to the static and more one-piece models of the second edition. Outlander's support for gangs not in the main rulebook was issued through Fnatic Magazine, and it also added some new gangs, such as the Enforcer Team, which were the cops of Necromunda. Not necessarily the Arbides, these guys were the paid security forces meant to keep law and order in the downhive. This edition stood for 13 years as the classic example of 40k skirmish. Once out of print, it was released as a free PDF on the Games Workshop website. It's been compiled by passionate community members into the Community Edition that's still available now through places like yaktribe.org. It's also been the basis for tons of 40k skirmish mods for things like Inquisitor and 28mm, as well as other small-scale games where you want a more intimate and detailed focus on the characters, progression, campaign rules, and specialty equipment items not necessarily reflected in a larger game like Warhammer 40,000. I'd like to thank the people that have kept Necromunda alive over the years. There's some fantastic communities out there online, using the rules, modifying them, and having a great time still playing this classic game of Underhive Warfare. Published in April of 2017, this new edition moves the game away from the House Wars of Necromunda to the war-torn Prometheum sprawl of Hive Acheron during the Third War for Armageddon. The box set contains rules for Space Orcs, Space Marine Scouts, and Astro Militarum kill teams. This represents the conflict as it was, with the various Space Marine chapters, Imperial Guard regiments, and Orc clans, all of which are represented in the rules, battling it out in the industrial sprawl and wasteland of Armageddon. Games Workshop has also created day one online support that adds kill team rules for squads from every other race in Warhammer 40,000. This is going to allow you to take a single unit from your army, the rules from the game, and participate in store leagues, campaigns, or just amongst your friends to add different factions into the war for Armageddon. With some small exceptions, the core mechanics are pulled directly from the previous two editions of the game, and the actual gameplay is nearly identical. Component-wise, you receive two boxes of Space Marine Scouts, the Sniper Scouts and the Melee Scouts. This allows you to have a variety of options, missile launchers, heavy bolters, sniper rifles, bolters, camel cloaks, and other gear that's equipable in this edition of the game. The 10-man Orc box allows for a variety of options as well. You can build a knob with a power claw, guys with choppas, guys with sluggas. My personal recommendation is to use the helmetless heads as your youths and the helmeted heads as the full trooper boys. You also get a heavy weapon, a heavy stubber, uh, which allows you to create a specialist to shoot some guns noisily and not very accurately for your orc kill team. The key feature in this box set is going to be the Prometheum Sprawl Terrain. This new plastic kit allows you to make furnace, gantries, walkways, and all kinds of great 3D terrain for your kill teams to fight over, which represents the Prometheum slums of Hive Acheron on Armageddon. You're also well supplied with tokens in this game, blast templates, and dice. The return of the artillery dice is in this game, as they're used for blast weapons, scattering, and seeing if they run out of ammo. You get tokens for running, overwatch, hiding, and being broken, as well as loot counters, a door, and some equipment pieces. These are used in the various scenarios throughout the game. Finally, the most coveted items in the box, the 120-page rulebook, instructions on how to put your extremely expansive amount of terrain together, and the Getting Started booklet, which gives you the basic core mechanics, an overview, and a run-through of the differences between this and normal Warhammer 40,000. The rulebook is probably going to be available separately, so for those of you that missed out in this box right away, don't freak out. It's almost guaranteed, and Games Workshop has stated that the rules will be available in the future, coming up for those that missed it the first time around. This box is more of a bundle of existing products with one new key feature being the rulebook and of course new terrain kits which have already been advertised for sale and are up for pre-order this launch weekend. And with that walkthrough of the box, I'll leave you there with my ongoing history of Underhive Warfare. I hope you guys enjoyed this walk down memory lane. I've certainly enjoyed making it once again and I hope you guys who are trying this for the first time enjoy this game as much as I have in the past. So now let's dive in and try a game of this new Shadow War Armageddon. Hey everybody, welcome to another Let's Play. Today we're playing Shadow War Armageddon, which is the brand new whoop, 
incarnation of the Gang Fight War Games series from Games Workshop that started with Confrontation um, and had Necromunda in between with two different editions, and then finally this right here. Um, and so, having you guys just watched sort of like the ongoing history of uh, Underhive Warfare in the 41st millennium. Uh, I'm gonna go through basically some highlights before we get started playing the game uh, and give you guys sort of what's old and what's new. What's, what's sort of like stuff you'll be recognizing if you played this kind of game before um, and stuff that you probably won't recognize or that's gonna be new and interesting when you guys pick this up on Saturday. Uh, so the first thing is the core rules are pulled right from 2nd edition 40k and or Necromunda. That includes movement statistics, so you got movement 5 space marines again, which will be weird for some people, um, and opposed dice pools for assaults, which is very different. There's no I hit you with initiative, then you hit me initiative. It's we both roll dice in a dice pool, and then it's high dice, plus and minus bonuses, um, and the differential is the number of strikes to the guys as the opponent. So the combat tends to be really brutal in this game, because if you're armed with like a power claw, there's no going last. You just win by like six, seven points and hit the guy at strength seven like a bunch of times with a minus. Armor mods. <laughs> and armor mods are back too, so like no saves and D3 wins per hit or whatever. Or D7 it's, or two D6. It can be, it can be, yeah, it can be really bad. <laughs> if you hit by a, a small nuclear device. Um, it's a familiar setting, so it's actually set during the Third War for Armageddon, um, and that's going to be familiar to some people. So that was a campaign that was run uh, in the very late 90s, I think it was in 99, 2000. Um, which was a real, one of the last worldwide campaigns, actually, the Games Workshop ran. Um, and it had been done previously, uh, actually, as the second edition starter set. So the second edition starter set was the Third War for Armageddon with Blood Angels and Orcs and Gretchen in the box and a cardboard Dreadnought and stuff. Dread. Yeah, you got it. And so that's the theme for the box. And that's why you've got Orcs and Space Marines, Blood Angels, in the box set. Um, and then the only other kill team whose rules are contained in this rule book right here are going to be the Imperial Guard kill teams because the Armageddon Steel Legion features really big. What's that? Astro Military. Astro Military, no, it's Imperial Guard. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's Imperial Guard. Um, and the Steel Legion, of course, being really key to the Armageddon War, uh, as well as like there's some sort of like regiments of renown, like uh, the Salvar Chem Dogs, who are one of my favorite, because they're basically all thieves. They, they come from like a weird polluted planet where they all wear like gas masks, and they had- Armageddon? It's not Armageddon, they're from <laughs> Salvar, because that's why the Salvar chem dogs. But you're like, a weird place where they all wear gas masks. No, 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 <laughs> but, but they had they actually had a chapter approved article for using them as a guard regiment, and their thing was they would like randomly have upgrades on the squads of what they'd been stealing from the guard regiments. So like you could just have like squads of carapace armor, so like the or like angels. special weapons. Players well, don't steal things. I'm talking about it. You Go in the comments, guys, you know what I'm talking about. What? <laughs> just making things up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the settings Blood pretty- Blood Ravens, sorry, that's what I meant. Blood Ravens, they are the steely ones, yes. That's what I meant. They will steal artifacts from anybody. Uh, no, the Relictors, that's who you're thinking of. They had, had Dorn's hammer or something crazy. I don't know. It's You're yeah. just making up facts now. I, I, maybe. <laughs> I might mix up things I remember. So yeah, so the old, those are things that are going to be familiar. If you've played Necromunda, if you've played um, Second Edition 40k, that's all basically in this game. Now, stuff that's new uh, that you probably m might not be expecting if you played games like this before is there's very little bookkeeping. There's no gang values. There's no experience tracking. Um, it's a D6 injury chart, not a D66. So there's no like high dice, low dice to roll for injuries. Um, there's no territories, no in-game currency, apart from the Prometheum cash, which isn't really a currency, it's more of a token. Um, there's no trading post or rare equipment, so what you can buy at the beginning of the campaign is the same as what you can buy at the end of the campaign. Um, and special operatives replace hired guns, but they're all one shot. So you bring in a Terminator, you bring in a Space Marine or whatever, they come with you for one mission and they leave. My favorite of these is the Solitaire, who replaces your entire gang. <laughs> But he's a second edition Eldar Solitaire, which means he'll just kill an entire game by himself. He's like weapon skill plus skill nine. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, there's three factions in the book, obviously. Like I said, Orcs, Space Marines, and um, the, uh, the Astro Militarum. Imperial Guard. I got what you will. Um, but uh, the, it's already been day one supported with uh, additional factions for pretty much at least one box from every faction in 40k. Um, not necessarily specific factions, but they've got, you've I mean, covered pretty Tyranids much everything. In they're in it, yeah, exactly. Like everybody's basically there. Um, and I think the idea there is too that the, mission, the rules are simple enough. The campaign, the campaign system is sort of like generic enough and not super rooted in the story of the Armageddon War that if you want to use these other factions, you could have it represent other wars in 40k. So you could have it represent like the Death Watch overkill setting where you've got the Death Watch fighting the Gene Steeler cult. And you can just use them all from that box with these rules and just and, and have the mines fighting instead of the Prometheum sprawl basically of uh, Hive Acheron. 
you could do a series of missions <coughs> of space marines attacking a hive ship. Hive ship, yep. Because the logic with Prometheum could very easily just be biosample. Biomass, yeah, just like the biomass yeah. thing. Basically, you're going to blow it up. Actually, yeah, it's funny. Collect brains, or or even or even just like the organs in the hive ship. Right. That's that what was I mean. that was turn and attack. Yeah, you could you could very easily do that. And so that's kind of like that's the strength of this game. It's a bit of a double-edged strength, but the, the sort of the setting itself is vague enough that with the additional day one sort of like support it's having, you can go ahead and set it wherever you want to set it for the factions that you're playing with. Um, I think the most obvious one is there's tons of people who are going to be using it for playing Inquisitor. They'll be doing Inquisitor Warbands um, and playing against each other with that. Um, it allows you to get like a lot of use of the models you already have. So that was something I think surprised people when they first saw the box set is it didn't do new miniatures. The whole intent here is to let you guys either get more out of your pre-existing miniature collection or remove that obstacle to like, I really like that one box set and I think it's super cool, I'd love to paint it, but I don't want to start an army of like a Gene Stealer cult. Um, and I'm completely guilty of that because I bought today a Gene Stealer cultist box and a Death Watch box I that I'd... <laughs> I was just like, I've been wanting to buy these forever. I don't want to do a Gene Stealer cult army, but I really want to buy this box set. So like, it, it, it's kind of a great enabling tool because it just lets you go and, and pick the one little box you want, model them, convert them however you want, and play a game. Um, and so that's it. So we're going to give you a walk through the rules. Now, this is mostly going to be for the guys who are um, you know, new to second edition 40K, which is probably going to be most of you. Um, and, and that's going to be uh, sort of just an overview of like how the turn sequence works. Now, it's actually got a great, here on, hand me that, rules reference sheet. So this also comes in the box set, along with all your tokens and dice and stuff. And this is the entire rules of the game. And I think what's cute about that is it fits into four pages. <laughs> Lack it's the, all the tokens, though. And, like, there's a lot of little details that you're it, not going to understand. Oh, it, well, it's, but that's exactly like the four page rules from AOS. It, it, you need the context of all the war scrolls and stuff. Yeah, it is. This is the same thing. It's the core mechanics for the whole game. It's even got the campaign stuff at the end, you said, didn't it? Beginning. Yeah, at the beginning. That's right. It's got the campaign well, it's stuff. It's got the, how to the, do pre, the before mission, pre mission sequence and stuff, dice. too, which is cool. If you know all the missions, you can just play it out of the book. You can just play it out of the book, yeah. But this is super handy, and I like the, the fact that it's, um, it's, a, it's a sort of like robust, it's on card, card stock. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, not, like, you've got a reference that, and, and because this isn't a hardback, this is a softback book, it's going um, to get mangled. I, the original Necromunda books actually were just like this. They were softback books, and yeah. everybody bought the hardback later on because their books were literally like falling apart, like everything was coming out of them. So I'm going to playing the Orcs today. I'm going to be playing the Space Wolves. Um, so you can basically play all of the chapters that were on Armageddon with the basic Space Marine Scout rules, um, and it can make sense. There's even a little annotation for playing Space Wolves, so he'll be having a Space Wolf Scout Squad. Um, I've got my uh, the, the Thrill Kill Cult, which is going to be my my what I would make out of a 10-man box of Orcs that comes in the, uh, the starter set. Uh, and we're playing on some cool industrial terrain. Didn't bother trying to paint up the plastic terrain from the box, because it's super nice. Uh, we're going to play on our pre-existing Necromunda setup, but we have a Necromunda setup, so like... It's not like we don't already have all the stuff we need yeah, to start playing the game. So we'll show you the forces, we'll show you the, the table setup, we'll go through the basics of Warband building, and we'll get started. So let's start with the roster sheets, um, because when we go through the actual like, setting up a campaign for this, the first thing you're going to do is muster a kill team. Um, and mustering a kill team means spending a thousand points from one of the different kill teams, either in the book or from the, um, the, the new sort of like uh, expansion, the DLC stuff. And they're all divided into types. There are going to be troopers, recruits, and specialists. And then you've got a leader who leads your army. I should have bookmarked this. <laughs> um, da, da, da. And the only reason I'm needing to flip to the book right now Pretty is that you don't keep gear. track of costs. Is it after gear? The, if you're it's so. I think I literally just had it. And then is that it? No. That's you're probably right. Da, 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 da. Hit and run. Oh, these are all characters. Space Marines. There it is. It's Orc Boys. And let's just do this. You guys don't have to live through that again. Um, <clears throat> so you have a thousand, uh, and you have to have a leader. So in this case, it's going to be a boss knob. Um, and he costs 160 points. And then you can equip him with... He comes with a shank and squick out armor, so a knife. In addition, you can be armed with anything chosen from the Orc Boys. Hand-to-hand, -hand, pistol, basic weapons, grenades, and miscellaneous item lists. So these lists over here. And again, this little table of stuff is all you ever get to choose from. So like, there's no trading post. There's no post-game stuff. This is basically what you can buy for your Orc Boys. Um, now, of course, you can always mod this, so you can go and write more things, but this is what's included in the game. Um, and you're going to go and fill this out. So after you got your leader, you're going to start getting some troopers. Uh, and you always have to have more troopers than you have recruits. So I've got some recruits, too, which are young guys. Um, and the uh, the basic cost is you're going to go up to 1,000 points. So in mine, I've got over here, which is Tough Skull, my knob. 
Uh, I've got on the left there, that's going to be Tough Guts, which is my spanner. He's got a big shooter. And his little lieutenant, Git Ripper, he's the guy with the Buzz Choppa, which is basically an orc chain sword. Um, and he's a trooper. And I've got three troopers, three more troopers over here to Bulls. There's Bulls 1, Bulls 2, and Bulls 3 with their horned helmets. And they've all got Choppas and Sluggas and Squeak Heart Armor. And three youths. There's going to be Scar, which is this guy right here. Glitz with his cool earrings. And then over here is going to be um, Lugs, because he looks like he's carrying something heavy. And they're all youths. So they have a reduced stat line. Um, and it's kind of like in the original Necromunda, where you had Juvies and Gangers. And the Juvies would basically advance till they became Gangers. But because there's no experience system, that's what this over here is, his mission's completed. So for one of these guys, the recruits, for every mission that they are not at action at the end of the game, that you, you fight, you don't have to win, you fill in one of these boxes. And as soon as three are filled in, they become a trooper. Their stat line automatically advances, so it gets boosted up to this one. So you're never really going to spend your advances on these guys during a post-game sequence. You're always going to spend it in the troopers until one of these guys becomes a trooper because you groom up to become basically a more valuable guy. So in this case, we've got the old school, actually, funnily enough, the new school orc stat line mixed with the old school uh, orc stat line. So they're moving four. Um, all the basic orcs are weapon skill four, both skill two, just like a current 40k orc. Initiative two attacks two. Now, in the old days, orcs were just humans with toughness four. Like, that was the only difference, was they were toughness four human. Um, but this is gonna be interesting because they used to be able to skill three, now they're able to skill two, and there's range modifiers in this game, so it's gonna be hard to hit stuff. So my mob is nine guys, I've got some extra models to recruit, but this would be what I'd be building out of the, um, the 10 man box that comes in there uh, to get myself started. I basically, to mark my my youths, my uh, my recruits, I use guys without helmets and because they're goths, they'll earn their, their little helmet basically between games um, when they become a, a full sort of like gang guy. And here's the Grim Pack, which is the Space Wolf um, scout squad. We've got the Sergeant here, which is gonna be this guy with his top knot, which is Eagle Longstride. He's got a Bolter, Combat Blade, Bolt Pistol, Scout Armor, Frag Grenades, and Camo Gear. Everyone's got Camo Gear, and what that does is reduce ranges against you by four inches maximum. We've got three regular dudes with Bolters. Um, their names are Barrel Star Runner. Uh, we've got Tarek Sun Eater, and then we've got Sui Fobane, and they are all uh, armed with bolters, combat blades, bolt pistols, and scout armor. And then finally in the middle there we have the specialist, which is Berigar Halfhand, and he's got a Meltagun, combat, gla uh, combat blade, bolt pistol, scout armor, and camo gear. So you don't get heavy weapons on your scouts uh, specialists when you're Space Wolf, you get special weapons instead. Which makes them different and unique, and I like that they put that rule in there. So five-man team going up against a nine-man team in this mission. Um, that's a thousand points of little uh, Space Wolf scouts. So now these are uh, like advanced scouts, basically. They're the errated scouts from the current 40k. So they're weapon skill, but skill four, all of them. Um, they have basic Space Marine stat line. Movement five instead of movement four, which is the old Space Marine movement. Uh, and that's basically their, their characteristic differences from the old days. Now this is uh, three troopers, a leader, and a specialist. Um, the thing with the Space Wolves is they cannot take recruits because all of their scouts are considered to be grizzled. They're not trainees. They're like a, a veteran position within the Space Wolves. Um, and so, unless you're playing a different chapter, uh, you cannot take the young guys, you have to take the expensive scouts. Let's try off a few other components here. We've got the token sets. Um, so these are going to be supply caches to scavenge with. And then they're also markers, and the markers are all uh, different states. So this is broken. So if you fled, if a model goes down within two inches of you, or out of action within two inches of you, make a leadership test, um, and you could potentially start fleeing. We have ran, you have to mark models that run, because they're minus one to hit in the shooting phase. Hiding, if you're in cover and you only walked, you can go into hiding and you can only um, find those guys if you come with an initiative range of them. And the one right there is overwatch, and overwatch, of course, um, if you do nothing during a turn, you can go into overwatch. You can shoot the opponent during his turn if he moves into your 90 degree arc of sight. Uh, and that means that uh, you'll basically become a little snap fiery turret, which is super handy. It actually uses the old artillery dice as well. So for blast weapons and stuff, um, you will potentially roll to hit with these and like throwing grenades, uh, which means you can get the uh oh and blow things up. Um, the gun stat lines are pretty close to the same as second edition. Um, and pretty close to the same as Necromunda, but the ammo rolls have been modified. So ranges are all incredibly different from current 40k. So bolt pistol, short range is 8 inches. Long range is up to 16 inches. At short range it's plus 2 to hit, at long range is no modifier. Strength 4, 1 damage. Minus 1 to saving throws, so armor pierce a minus 1. And ammo roll 5 plus. Now ammo rolls used to be 1d6. If you roll 6 to hit, which I just did, you have to make an ammo check. Uh, and in the old days it was one dice, now it's 2d6 to try and beat the number. So it's a 5 plus on 2d6, 
If you pass, if you roll higher then, you're good, you continue to shoot. If you roll under it, um, you will have uh, runner to ammo with that gun, you can't fire for the rest of the game. And if you roll snake eyes and your weapon is unreliable, it'll actually blow up. And all my, all my guns are unreliable because they're orc guns. So if I have to make an ammo roll and I accidentally blow myself up, um, I take a hit from my own gun, which is pretty hilarious. Some guns also have uh, sustained fire, so additional shots they can make. You have to declare if you're making them before or not. Uh, there's things like uh, flamers, and they are sort of like one-shot weapons. They make an ammo roll every time they fire. Uh, and they have uh, you know multiple wounds per hit, like D3 wounds. There's also a thing called high impact. Any gun that's strength five or more, if it takes you out, takes you out on a five plus instead of just on a six. Finally, we've got these handy dandy Shadow War Armageddon. Uh, the, these are the Spec Ops cards. So you can't take them in your first game because you have no Prometheum, but during a game, you can spend a Prometheum canister to take a, uh, 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 a basically like a, a Spec Ops guy. And he shows up for one game. Uh, he's got war gear, basically as you decide. So he has some options and stuff, and then special rules. So like a pain boy gives you a war dock, fighters within three inches of pain boy, take two from the injury in the recovery phase to a minimum of one, so they can get up easier. And as long as the pain boy didn't go to action, you can reroll serious injury rolls for one fighter after the mission, because you can actually try and like revive them and stuff. The Space Marines get a Terminator, a veteran, a Death Watch kill team member, and an apothecary. So these guys can be hired on later on. You can have the runt herd and, and some grots, a flash bit boy. Um, pain boy or a what's the flash get sorry that's a mech a mech boy so with our kill team muster we're going to determine a mission uh, we've already rolled and we're going to do scavengers because it's one of the more fun ones uh, and once we've done that we'll set scavengers up and then we roll for a Prometheum sprawl subplot and these are like secondary missions and they're pretty cool each player rolls for one uh, so in scavengers the Prometheum Spall is in your endless maze of concealed entrances and long forgotten crumbling structures. Sometimes they contain valuable cash of Prometheum, prized with the kill teams, are often tasked with locating. Uh, not without risk though, because these isolated blisters can be home to ferocious mutant creatures. In this mission, two kill teams encounter each other while scavenging, and each tries to drive them out, each other off while grabbing the loot for themselves. So, we place our terrain, levels and structures, all of our beautiful gantries, this is all by Wargames tournaments. The rest of the terrain provided by um, GameMat.eu, which is all the like crates and stuff, this is our industrial battles on the side. And this is an old fat mat, which I don't know if it's still available or not, the industrial mat, but it's super cool and very appropriate for the setting. Uh, we're both gonna place, we've diced off already and gotten four supply counters, four loot counters, and we roll off to see who places the first one. They have to be placed outside our deployment zones, which are eight inches and not within four inches of each other. So in somewhere appropriate, basically. You grab them by walking into them, and as soon as one side is holding more than the other, or at least half, sorry, the majority, um, or they've taken them to their deployment zones, they will win the game. Put one right there. And it's very cool that you get all these little counters. I might actually bottle cap these in the future. I'm gonna put some above ground level, I think. Now we roll on the Prometheum Sprawl 2d6 to see what our subplots are. You've got six, which is going to be a hidden cache. The player who wins the mission gets an additional 100 points to spend on recruit or rearm for free. If both players roll this, the player who wins gets an additional 150 instead. And then I'm going to get a nine, which is indomitable. The player who rolls this can extract one from their bottle test for this mission. Handy because I'm leadership seven. <laughs> it's going to be handy because my boy squad is a special rule, uh, which is they're basically our... Um, our, our mob rule, where we get plus one leadership uh, to our leader as long as we have more guys than our opponent does. And right now I do. If I have twice as more guy, uh, twice as many guys, I get plus two. So I'm effectively leadership eight right now, nine because I'll have minus one of the roll. Um, and as soon as I kill one of your guys, I'm gonna go to leadership 10. Now, there are bottle tests in this game, which we'll have to make. If we take 25% uh, casualties, you make a runaway test to serve every turn to see if you actually take off. And there's, of course, nerve tests, too, to see if one guy goes go down, your friends run away. Each player's gonna roll a dice now. The low score chooses the battlefield to set up on and places all of their kill teams. So, roll off, I get a one. I bet I get to go first, so I'm gonna choose this edge and deploy everyone with an eight of the edge. I've deployed, we've got my youths, my two um, recruits right here, along with one of the bulls. We've got my spanner up top with the big shooter, another one of the recruits from another bull, and then we got Git Ripper, one of the bulls, and the boss, Tough Skull, hanging out on the flank looking for some of this Prometheum. Uh, you've got your boss, looks like your leader right here. Not this one with the boss. Nope, the guy with the top, that's the boss. Oh, I see. Do you want to change him around? Nah. Okay, you don't care? <laughs> They're all bolt guns. Fair enough, well, I'll melt the gun right here. And then your last three bolt gun guys across the flank. Uh, so everyone's deployed right now. 
going to roll off to see who goes first, but there's some other important things for you guys to know about. The monster roll. Each player rolls a d6 at the start of their opposing player's turn. On a roll of 1 to 5, nothing happens, but on a roll of 6, an unknown mutant monstrosity has attacked a member of the rival kill team. So the fighter's attack is always the furthest one from any of their models, friend or foe. If there's several ones that are equal, so they just randomize. You roll die. On a 1, the fight, fighter managed to beat the creature off. Uh, the fighter may do nothing else this turn. In addition, the fighter must make an ammo roll uh, for their main ranged weapons. They have to use a lot of ammunition to drive it off. Two to five, they beat it off, but they can't do anything this turn. On a six, there's a gunshot, a shriek, and the inky blackness swallows another victim. The fighter's automatically taken out of action. So you can just have guys like get disappeared by monsters. Uh, loot, you can just walk over it, you can hand it off in the shooting phase, but then you can't shoot either model. Um, and the game ends. If a kill team fails a bottle roll, uh, the kill team uh, that bottles uh, loses, and the winner's left in possession of the battlefield. The winner can claim any loot counters that are not at the, uh, on the battlefield. And if a kill team sees in capturing more than half loot counters, uh, and the fighters uh, carrying them are within eight inches of their own battlefield edge, start of the beginning, then they win. So you have to grab three of these four and then get to your own deployment zone. Special after the game's over, each kill team will roll a die. Um, on a six, they get an additional Prometheum cash, but it's one or more sixes. You only ever get one extra one at the end of the game. And that's it. So let's dice off right now and see who's going first. You get a two. I got a three for monsters. Roll a six. No. Nope. Sequence movements, uh, much like old fantasy, it's charge to declare first. Then anything compulsory, like if you're frenzied and stuff, and then the rest, so everybody else from remaining moves. Um, you can also run, but if you do so, you gain a run counter, which of course means that it's harder to shoot you during the next turn, and of course you can't shoot during your turn. If you walk, you can also hide from one of these guys, uh, as long as you're in cover. Open ground, you can move through normally. Difficult grounds, half movement. Very difficult, it's quarter movement. And of course, you can't move through impassable ground. Walls and barriers, you can cross uh, a barrier less than an inch high with no more than one inch deep with no extra movement. A barrier that's between one and two inches high but no than one deep can be crossed, but you have to use half distance. And a barrier higher than two inches, you can't just walk over. So basically, you couldn't walk over these. You could walk over these at half movement. All right, well, let's start running. Uh, so we ha don't have any other tests to do, so we're gonna run. This little fella's gonna run up here. Get into some cover. Boss is gonna run up. Over here, whoop, and also be running. And this orc is going to run as well, and he's going to run this way, and be running. This little youth is going to come out an inch, and then basically move another seven, so he's going to end up right there, around the corner, whoop, come across the gantry. Now you got to be careful, if you get shot when you're within an inch of the edge of something, where there's no wall, you might fall off, so it's lucky that there's walls here because they'll prevent people from making fall tests. Uh, these youths are gonna run up too, head towards the treasure. Let's get that Prometheum, here we go, boys. Everybody's running up over here, and then last but not least, my spanner, who can't really see anybody right now, he's gonna move up four, walk to here, and attach his clip harness, which will prevent him from falling. I ran, so no shooting phase, uh, because nobody can shoot guns when they run. Um, and we skip right to the end, there's no one to recover. Uh, and so we're gonna roll right now for sort of turn two and see if Owen gets attacked by a monster. Nope. Okay, first scout coming up. Go four, and then he goes six more. And he'll sit on this little gantry here. It looks good, and you get a run counter. Run just across. get in position, yeah, makes sense. It's gonna go. Does it feel weird to be running eight, 10? Eight, it's like you're playing elves. And two. Uh, <laughs> Still running up. Melt the gun guy. He's gonna get up behind this little piece of cover. Looks good. And bolt gun is gonna go three, and then start climbing this ladder. Ladders are considered open ground, so they can just be moved up to normally. Seven inches up. He's basically still on the ladder, yeah. but he's about that high up. Looks good. <clears throat> Hanging out. Boss. Uh, Got him, there's orcs coming. So you know what, let's just move, because we're gonna try and take some shooting. Okay. Shoot Kit Ripper with his buzz blade, uh, and you are definitely Long in range. Slide. Yeah, I'm in the open. Fire bolt gun, four. he's within 24, uh, no modifier for range. Minus. Strength four, minus one of my save. I only have a six plus save, and then a five plus ammo roll. Yep, but, uh, so, minus one because he ran. That's right, so so yeah, so your bullets go four, which means right now you need a three plus. Uh, no partial cover or half obscured. There is partial cover. Oh, there's Definitely partial cover, there's okay. There's stuff between us. Okay, yeah. so, so minus one for the partial cover then, up to half targets obscured. Um, I'm not charging, the target ran the previous movement phase, so minus one for that. Uh, and I'm not small and not large, so minus two to your bullet skill makes a bullet skill two, so five plus, you'll hit me, nope. and you don't. All right, and that is your shooting phase, recovery phase, no one's down, uh, I didn't get hit, so I don't get pinned, and that means you roll to see if monsters show up. Nope. No. You gotta follow my ran counters because it's sort of a new turn. All right, no charges to declare, no compulsory moves. So we're gonna go on to remaining moves. This little fella is gonna walk up to this, three inches, touch it, 
and then run five more inches away and be like, pace him out. I needs, I needs the loot. I'm just gonna be back here. Carrying a loot marker. This youth is gonna go three to this ladder, and then it's three in the air, and then two more forward, and move two more and just be behind. Actually, I can move two more that way, and just be behind a little bit of wall. This little guy's gonna go around eight inches, whoop, and then hide back here, advance on some more of your guys. This youth's gonna run, he's gonna go five to the ladder, and then three into the air, which will put him just at the next level. Up here, on the ladder still. This little guy's gonna go and do much the same thing. Except it'll take him six to get there, so he's just like an inch in the air on that ladder. Right there. Get Ripa, get in there. You're gonna go eight. And not quite make it to this thing, so you're gonna go a little bit laterally. Take cover behind that. Your friend's gonna go. He's gonna run up behind this crate, or this wall rather. Like that. And then so is the boss. So not moving with him, which means we're gonna fire our big shooter this turn. So I have two sustained fire dice with this thing, which means I'm gonna roll 2d3, that's how many shots I get. I don't have to roll all the sustained fire dice, but I'm going to, because I'm a terrible shot. Oh, you shoot. Skill two. I'm gonna shoot this fellow right here. Okay. Huh. I'm at 36 inch range. 32 inch range? 36 inch, well either way, I'm still in range. 32? I guarantee I'm in range. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna get three shots. Um, and even if I run out of targets, now I can target him or guys within four inches of him. Um, there's nobody else within four inches, it's all gonna go into him. I have to make all the shots individually, and they can stop if I fail an ammo roll. So I'm at long range, and you're in cover and ran. Uh, so zero mod for range, yeah. you ran for minus one, and partial cover for minus one. So I'm hitting on sevens, because I'm with skill two. Yeah, so a seven is a six followed by a four plus, so anytime I hit you, it's gonna be an ammo roll. First one, whoa! Yep, it hits you. Ammo roll though, the ammo on a big shooter is gonna be a five plus on 2d6. Oh, oh, okay, passes. So I hit you once, the second shot misses, the third shot misses. So um, you've taken one strength four hit and a minus one to your save. So on a four plus it wounds you. Uh, oh, sorry, strength five for a big shooter. So on a three plus it wounds you. And it doesn't win. But you are pinned, so place him face up. And he'll have to make a check to see if he can do anything next turn other than crawl around because he ducks for cover when he gets shot at. That's all my shooting. So that's my turn. And you can try and unpin yourself. So normally you have to have a friend standing within two inches of you to make a recover from pinning test. But Space Marines have the special rule and they show no fear. They can always make an initiative test to stand up and keep fighting. So let's see if that Space Marine can. He nope. fails. So you can crawl two inches this turn but can do nothing else. No charges, just going straight to movement. He's going to crawl back to a little bit more cover. And then it's on to your remaining moves. Sure. You're gonna climb up, yep. And then he's got some more inches to move over, like so. Okay. Just walking. Yep. Uh, our friend down here, I don't know what the ranges are for grenades, but we're gonna try. <laughs> so I'm just gonna walk out, because he doesn't afraid of anything. You can go one more inch, because you can go five. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so I know, right? Space, Space Marines. Ultra Man. Walk five. He's gonna come out on the far side of this yep. little bridge here. Be ready to get some melt gun on. Lost the bolt guns. He'll walk over corner. behind this little corner. And move him to do some shooting. And then we're gonna shoot you. Throwing a grenade in this cluster of orcs, you have to shoot the closest target because that's the rule that you can do. Unless the, the one that's further away is easier to hit. But all my guys are in cover, so they're all gonna be hard to hit. Um, you get a range of three times your strength, so a space can throw a grenade, frag grenade, 12 inches, which is super handy. Um, and it's a normal bliss skill attack. So he ran last turn for minus one. Um, and then he is behind partial cover, but not touching full cover for another minus one. So you're gonna hit him on a five, and if you miss, we get the artillery dice out. And you hit, so it's gonna blast him, and it's a large blast. It's great for you, because it's gonna blow up, and it's gonna hit, looks like just the knob. Whoop, not quite the other guy. Um, but all, both of them are gonna hit, they're both gonna get pinned by this, no matter what. And you get to make a roll at strength three against your toughness of four. So against him, nope. that's a nope, and then against the knob. It wounds. Now that he's been hit, we have to make an injury roll. Uh, normally a one wound guy would go directly to this roll. On a one, take a flush wound. You strike one for your blood skill and weapon skill for the rest of the game. On a two to five, you're down, which is face down. Um, and you roll at the end of every turn to see if you recover, either to a flush wound or go to action because you might bleed out. And on a six, you take it out of action. Um, now I have two wounds on my knob, so he's actually gonna have to make an armor save to try and block it. And if he passes, he's okay. Otherwise he's gonna go down to one wound. Four plus, no, he fails it, uh, and he's gonna take a wound, have one wound left. They're also both pinned, which is super handy for you. Uh, they'll be able to test to recover though, because the guy within two inches of at least one of them is also a regular boy. Are you within six? six? Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, you're just within six, so you're in short range, so it's plus one to hit. Uh, and he is minus going two. to be minus two because he ran and cover. So one plus. Hits, strength eight, so it's a two to wound. Oh, D6 wounds. Two. So he takes two, so it's two injury rolls now to see what happens, and it's high impact, so on a five, six, he's out. Oh, he gets a flush wound, but he's down face down. So he's already flush wounded once, so he's minus one, minus one. Um, and now he's also down. Walking up here is gonna shoot my running away orc. Now, is he closer than this guy? There's two guys here, they're in the open on ladders that you can shoot. Oh. My youth here is closest, is gonna get shot. So he ran for minus one, but he's in the open. So Force. are you within 12? Uh, they don't plus have one any mods. Bolters are plus one within 12. Not within 12, so it's gonna be on four. Hits him. Uh, toughness four. Four to wound. No, but I have to make an initiative test because I've taken a hit now within one inch of an edge. If I don't roll a one or a two, I'm going to fall six inches and take a strength six hit. I failed dramatically, and I'm going to fall six inches, so I literally plummet to the bottom of this thing. And try and roll to wound me. So two plus. I'm yep. wounded. See what happens? I'm down, so I'm face down. The youth's just crawling around. It's the youth of Armageddon crawling around the bottom here, soaking in his own blood. So he went, well, he went down within two inches. <laughs> actually, I owe you one right here as well for him going down in action. So he's leadership seven. Uh, I do still have more guys than you on the field, so I'm gonna be leadership eight. I'm just barely good. So we got right here, because he went down, leadership eight. He's good as well. Four gun. Can I shoot the other one he's climbing? Yep, right here. Sounds good. So are you within 12? One you get plus be. one. I don't think so. This is always the problem in nope, Andrew games. Out. No, he's out. So he's gonna hit on a four. Minus one for range. Hits. Hits. Force to wound. Nope. Doesn't wound. Initiative test. Oh, oh my god. Strike three. Wounds, wounds me. What happens? Face down. down. Both of them face down. Just plummet to the death. All the orcs are down. No melees. So that's all you got. So it's over to me. So let's grab all these run counters. Uh, these guys cannot test recover from pinning. That was the monster. Oh, that's right, six plus. No. Nope. See if the knob recovers from pinning. He's actually initiative three, and he doesn't, so he can only crawl two inches this turn. I have to actually make a bottle roll here, because I've got three guys down out of my nine, which is 25%. Now, I can use uh, the leadership of anybody. They're all leadership seven, but I get no bonuses right now, because I've got nobody who's actually um, uh, outnumbering you. I've, I'm actually, oh no, because the pinned guys they do count. count. So I do, six I have six, five. it's six to five. I do outnumber you, so I'm plus one leadership still. Yeah. So I'm leadership eight, nine effectively because of my indomitable will, and I'm fine. So I'm not gonna run away this turn. We have to keep running. We're not gonna try and charge. We're just gonna go grab some loots and get out of here. Uh, so we're gonna seesaw out this little fella. He's gonna hop over this, less than inches is three, and then move five inches back away from it. So back of this way. Basically back two inches. Yeah, back two inches from where he is. Whoop, and be running, so we'll keep his run counter on him. And be hanging on to this loop. We're gonna crawl two with him pinned. We're gonna crawl two with him pinned. So you're just gonna go get some work done. I'm just gonna run. Get him. These downed guys are not feeling so well. They're just gonna keep crawling two inches back towards the ladder. They don't roll first. <laughs> no, they roll at the end. They can crawl while they're down. I see. But they just can't uh, do anything else. And this little guy's gonna run. He's gonna run, whoop, to here, and then back around the corner. This there is his clip harness and dial up some shots. Let's do some shooting. We're gonna dial up some shots. We're gonna start with this guy into your melty gunner, I think. Uh, so we'll see both stained fire dice. Ha! That's gonna be two shots. We'll put them both into him. Cover, I think I'm not, there's no bonuses for range, I don't think anyway. Six is it, it's an automatic ammo roll. First one, hits, ammo check, five bluffs. Mode ammo, and it explodes and hits me too. <laughs> Cause I'm unreliable. So yeah, I'm go orcs. Three. So three bluffs. Nope, and do you and me on a three? Nope. <laughs> oh, the big shoe's not unreliable. I'm lucky, so it doesn't actually pin me. It's just out of ammo for the rest of the game. Runner down, so we're just gonna recover. That means these guys are gonna stand up. The boss is gonna stand up. You get back there. Get Rip is gonna stand up, and we're gonna be done. Tests. Mm -hmm. For this fella, three, he continues to stay down. The youth, down, and the boy, down. Ah, see monsters show up first. They don't. And now it's pin test, try and unpin your melt gun. Easy he passes, so he's gonna stand up and return to fighting. Charging in? Yep. Do it. Charge over here with him? Yep. Might as well. Remove some orc. Yep, yeah, just got the bullet gun. Walking up four more inches, five more inches, sorry. Yep, and you can take shots either that way or at those guys. And you got it. Back up. Just gonna sit basically where I am, 
Outside of charge range? Yep. And I'm gonna throw grenades at you, because I can throw farther than you can charge. This is true. Clock. I'm gonna throw a grenade at your boss man there. Alright. So He's not the closest target though. This guy oh, is. That guy is? Yep. Can I stand there? If you want to move Forgot again. That. Sure. <laughs> I haven't moved any I haven't finished moving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go for it. Let's go into for partial cover. Yep. Hit. The hit. Okay, sure. So hits him. Strength three against Thomas four. Fives. No. Nope. Opening guy. Nope. No. Okay. So I am pinned. And that is all. Over here is gonna shoot you. The boss while he's down there. Not him. Can't see him at all. Okay. Go for it. Shoot to the boss. Not uh, this guy. Or this he's guy. He's down, down, down. Is he not closer? Doesn't oh, you can ignore the down guy. That's right, because yeah. he's pinned. Oh, missed. I'm gonna shoot the down guy with this guy with the bolt gun. Yep. And hit. hit. No cover when you're down. Shouldn't be, yep. At least from there. They're plus one, oh, plus one. Anyway, there so it doesn't go. matter. So force one. doesn't nope. matter. Okay, so I'm this is gonna be a great example because I'm I'm already down, which means you just automatically take me out of action. So blah, he gets his neck stepped on while he's down. We're here you charge. So what happens is you get to roll a die for each um, attack you have in your attack characteristics. I'm gonna roll two dice. And then you get a bonus die if you have additional close combat weapons. So you've got a combat blade and a bolt pistol. Yeah. So you could roll an additional die. No bonuses for charging? Uh, nope, no bonuses for charging. One of the recruits, actually, so he's only going to get two dice. So uh, I am weapon skill three, which means I'm going to roll two dice, pick the highest, and then add a bunch of modifiers here, um, and get a uh, total score. You're going to roll two dice, add four for your weapon skill, plus a bunch of modifiers. And you get a four as your highest. Ugh. I get a two as my highest. So I get two, three, four, five for my weapon skill. You're going to get four, five for charging. Uh, one for charging? You get plus one for plus one to your total score, oh, not I plus see. one dice. Got it. So you're gonna get five for charging, four for your weapon skill, which puts you at nine. Ten because I have a fumble. So you get ten to my five. You hit me five times the weapon of your choice. I assume it's gonna be your bolt pistol because it's got an AP mod, whereas your basic combat blade doesn't. Well, I'm still strength four, right? But you're not minus one of my save. Strength four for the same mod as your pistol, actually. So you can just knife me if you want, which you will. Force to wound. Two. Uh, two wounds, and I have to make my saving throws. I can't because there's a minus one modifier, which means I'm automatically taken out of action. Oh, yeah. uh, as, long, as long as you down me. Don't just flush with me. Yeah. Don't you do. <laughs> so a two inch follow up move. Actually, we're going to go back towards the ladder. Towards so the ladder? Climb down and get that. Sounds good. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want to jump? That is your turn. So I've got two guys out of action uh, and two guys down, which means another bottle roll. So let's see if the boss bottles. Uh, I think I still have. No, I'm down. I'm at equal odds now. So it's going to be leadership seven minus one because of my special rule. I'm out. Peace, I bottle. Um, so you're going to get to claim the two Promethean caches that are loose on the board, but I get to keep the two that I'm holding, and you automatically win the game. So post game injuries. Now I've got uh, all the pinned fighters and fighters who are in action still are fine. They go home, they tell their tales, they lie about how well they did during the game. Um, the guys who are down, though, during the game after all died. On one to three, they go to action. On a four to six, they go back into the living pile. So this little uh, youth here, he's fine. This little guy. He's going to be in the, the naughty pile, so he's going to go over here. It's worth knowing that this is the opposite of the way they used to do it on Necromunda, where on a 1-3 to three they'd recover to a flush wound, and on a 4-6 to six they would go out of action. So, for those of you who are veteran players, I second-guessed myself there for a second, had to look it up, and they've actually changed it. So, the 4 plus means you're okay, the 1-3 to three means you go out of action. And then you got to make injury rolls. Now, uh, injury rolls can be bad. It's only a d6. On a 1, I could be dead. Uh, on a 2+, plus, other things happen. So, we'll roll for the 2... Uh, Bulls first. The bull, he gets a two. That's not good. He's gonna get a head wound. He's going to gain the frenzy rule, which will make him crazy, like unreliable, and has to run forward. And he also has to miss the next mission. So I have a frenzy guy. The next one, one, he might be dead. Four plus, he becomes captured. Otherwise, he's just dead completely. Nope, he's just dead completely. That guy just gets killed. And then my other recruit, also potentially dead. He gets captured, so you're gonna capture that guy. Gonna make our next mission easy because it's gonna be a rescue. And those are all my injury rolls. And then we have to make the final steps. So we've done rewards of battle. Next one is uh, the advanced. Recovered, yeah. So claim right. Prometheum. So players gain Prometheum caches according to how they fare during the mission. So you get uh, D3 because you won. So D3 Prometheum caches. So three plus you secured two on the battlefield. So roll a dice for each one. If you roll one or more sixes, you get an additional one. Yep. Yeah, so you get four total. So I get one. I got D3 plus two plus, plus one. one. No, D3 just plus one. You don't, th these ones turn into one on a roll of a six. No, you get an additional one on a roll of a six. That's, no, just one. I also captured two, so I can roll to see if I get an additional cash. I need to roll a six. And 
one to do. So I get two caches to your four. Now we advance. A member of your kill team has picked up a new skill or been toughened. Pick a fighter other than a new recruit and uh, that was not taken out of action during the mission and roll on the advance table opposite for them. So I'm gonna choose my boss. I'm gonna try and make my boss better. Or I could choose my gunner. Oh. My boss is already pretty good. I'm gonna do the gunner. Let's see what happens to him. So the chart is right here. It's 2d6 and I get a seven, which is going to be skills. So generate a new skill. The Goff specialist can choose from combat, ferocity, gorilla, or muscle skills from the orc skill tables. I'm gonna probably take a gorilla skill because I think that's a cool idea. So roll a die and see what I get. I get a two. two, and that's gonna be scavenger. As long as the fighter didn't go out of action after the mission, you spend 50 extra points to, to re recruit or rearm action. So he's now a scavenger. He gives me bonus uh, points to basically bring in new guys. One's gonna pick his leader for a level up and roll a nine. nine. It's gonna be a skill as well. So generate a new skill. So you're a space wolf, and that means you can choose from, whoop, for your leaders, anything except for agility. So you can do combat, uh, ferocity, gorilla, muscle, shooting, or stealth. Stealth, that's what you get. Wow. Five, that's gonna be infiltration. Uh, once kill teams have been set up, before the mission starts, you may roll, uh, make two free move run, or run moves without fighter. They may not be do anything else during those moves, and they have to stay eight inches away from the enemy. That's pretty cool. super sweet for that guy. So he gets infiltrator. Now we add promotion markers. So for all my youths that survived, which is gonna be two of them, um, and didn't go out of action, which is two of them, uh, they're gonna gain an advance. Filling in for Scar and Glitz. Uh, and then unfortunately Lugs was captured and I've lost a guy here. Now it's the resupply step. Uh, your team receives a supply drop um, or swaggers back to base and lies about how well they did in the last game. Uh, if your leader has been slain, choose one fighter from kill team to become a leader. Uh, otherwise don't. If your leader was not slain, you can choose one of the following actions. Uh, either recruit, add a new fighter to your, or new fighters to your kill team with a total cost, including equipment of no greater than 100 points. Any points may not be spent later. Uh, and then rearm, purchase new equipment for your fighters up to 100 points. You can trade a single Prometheum cache to increase your total points available for another 100. If you do so, remove the cache from your roster. I think I'm gonna do that this game. So spending one of my Prometheum caches, I have 200 uh, points to spend. I recruited two more troopers, so two more orc boys with slugs and choppas, um, and they've both got some, um, I guess I could buy them heavy armor. I'm not, they're not modeled with those, so I'm not gonna bother. Uh, and that means they've got the uh, 160 plus 10 plus 10, so they're 80 each, so 160. I lose the other 40, and because I'm not resupplying, I can't use that to buy more gear for the guys either. And that puts my current state at tough skull over here, same as he was. Um, and then tough guts, my, uh, what should I call it, my, uh, my sort of uh, specialist guy with his big shooter. Um, I forgot he had a red dot sight for the whole game, which would have been handy to have, uh, which would have given you a six plus A, but me plus one to hit, which would have been very handy for hitting on fives. Uh, and then I've got uh, this guy over here, which is Git Ripa. Um, I get the remaining boys, my two youths, Scar and Glitz, who are still in the game. Uh, my downed double over here, who's now frenzied, he's gonna miss a game next game. Uh, and then his friend who survived, and then my two new raw recruits, who are troopers though, so they don't have to be bad statted for the start of the game. So I'm at 10 guys, but someone's missing a game. And I've also got my youth over here, <laughs> which is Lugs. And Lugs is unfortunately captured for the next scenario. Resupply, so spend it all on gear. And what'd you buy for the guys? So for the leader, we bought Hellfire rounds for everyone who has a bolt gun. Yeah. Um, and then they all also got photo visors. Nice. So if they don't move, they negate cover by one. By one, yeah, cover goes down a level. Uh -huh. And then all of the regular ones got um, laser sights as well to get plus 12 inches range on their guns. Nice, so red dot sight? No, you mean uh, telescopic, telescopic sights. Yeah, 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 so yeah. they have the photo visor, so they ignore cover, plus 12 inch range, and then D3 wounds when they shoot you. Nice. But which is cool because it's all modeled that way too. Like these guys all have like visors and eyepieces and stuff too. Yeah. There it is, end of the game. The orcs get driven off, but both sides level relatively evenly because one of the things that is sort of taken into account in this game is, is there's no runaway gangs. Even if you win really big, you got four Prometheum stashes to my two. There's not necessarily going to be a huge recruitment advantage to one side or the other. So I went up to 10 guys, even though some guys died, um, and you up armed your five guys, you have a lot, but it doesn't, I don't think that the, the scale shift well, was hugely in one direction or the other. I'm now almost a third of the way to the end of the game. You could be, if you don't spend any. You spent one, didn't you? Yeah, no, you're a third of the way. I did not spend any because you, I got a free 100 because I rolled a six. Oh, for the, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's so where you the free have 100 one. You one and I have four. When yep. you get to 15, the game's done. That's right. So. There's actually a campaign, and we haven't actually mentioned that yet. I, I thought I would bring that up. That, if I, even that was kind of important. <laughs> um, so, so there is actually a win trigger, and that win trigger, of course, is if you get to 15 Prometheum and you win your next game, 
you win overall. Um, and so you are at four right now. But right. it could happen that you take some mass casualties because you took no casualties that game. And on a one, you saw it, guys just die. If three guys are out of action for your Space Marines, losing a Space Marine is a much bigger deal than losing an Orc because yeah. your guys cost almost 200 base. The thing is, they start at 100. And so you must they, spend... They'll, they'll come with knives and armor. Yeah. <laughs> so like you have to spend a Prometheum just to equip them when you hire a guy. Unless you're doing a, a novitiate, in which case you are a vastly inferior space marine, right? You're, yeah. you're only buff and skill, skill three. You're a guardsman. Well, you're a guardsman fancy full armor. of... Yeah, you're a guardsman with fancy armor full of bovine growth hormone. Like you're all just like, I don't know how my arms and legs work. <laughs> you're, all, you're all juiced, but you're very, un, you're very unwieldy. You're very gangly. Um, <laughs> and that kind of leads us into, I guess, the my sort of like thoughts on the game so far. Um, we're gonna play another game, you can see it on Owen's channel, it'll be linked below and you'll see the next game in this series. And these are the two games we're gonna play with the Warbands out of the box. So you don't expect to see the Space Wolves and the Orcs back a whole bunch, because we're gonna do our own narrative. We'll talk more about that later. But um, the, the sort of like thoughts I have so far, the big strengths in this game are, it's super accessible. If you already have a 40K army, you already effectively have a squad for this. Like if you Owen, don't, you can pick up one box. And that's it, you can pick up one right. box. So, so I think Games Workshop's done a really smart thing here. Um, whereas in the old days of specialist games, it was a whole new product line. The shell, it had to fit on the shelves in the stores. It was a new thing to bring in stock for an independent retailer. Um, and it created a whole other line of merchandise. In this one, what they're doing is they're giving you a new way to play with the stuff you already have. And an excuse to go and buy that box set that you really wanted for years and years, like that Gene Star Cup box that I wanted to have for ages. I have an excuse now to go and buy and build and paint. The other one is terrain, which is usually the limiting factor. You don't necessarily have to use a big city like this. Yep. You could just use ruins. Regular 40k terrain will work just as well. Now, just I, use lots of it. That's and the difference. And I was just going to say, the second strength is the new terrain is awesome. It's super cool. It's modular. Um, it's got gantries and walkways. It's all plastic, which means a lot more robust than the old cardstock stuff was. And you get enough in the box to get you started. But like Owen said, you mix it with the 40k ruins if you already have some, or like we have a necro to set up. Building rubble. Like. You're really just theming the planet that you want to be on. And it's perfect for the Armageddon setting, but you don't have to play in the Armageddon setting. You could play this game just as easily in the jungles of Katachan or in the ice waste of Valhalla or some like chaos world somewhere. And those are the planets <laughs> that people know in 40. <laughs> well, actually, my first thought. There are also other ones. So if I, well, if I was going to do it, my first thought actually for a campaign setting for us, because I was actually tinkering around with this, was I wanted to do the chaos held planet from Trader General. And it's like an imperial world, the one with the wire wolves, the one where they like they like sneak onto the planet to assassinate this general that's been been kidnapped. I don't want to spoil too much of the God's Ghost storyline, but the whole thing is that this is an occupied imperial world, occupied by chaos. And so it's like an imperial world, but like they have these things called wire wolves, which are like these big like sculptures that at night like come to life with chaos energy and become demons and hunt people if they're out after curfew. Like it's like a crazy like chaos planet. And then the three factions you would set it on are the infiltrating guards, which is the ghosts or whoever the the, the actual there's actual, um, there's like a Maquis as well. There's like a, a resistance movement that you could have. And then Chaos Space Marines and Cultists. And you've got just like two sides on the planet, but you've got a whole new setting that's effectively the same sort of idea. And instead of having Prometheum caches, you could just have it be like, either Imperial Shrines, like the hidden shrines that are all over the planet that you're collecting. And if you're the Chaos player, you're destroying them. If you're the Imperial player, you're either reinforcing them or like finding them and protecting them. I have a series of ideas as well. But yours are all based on 4chan's Yes. What you call it? The All Guardsman Party. The All Guardsman Party. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows what it's going to be? We'll find no, out. No, I know what it is. You know what it is? You've got to find even, out. Even the missions, like, there's correlation you could do. Yeah. Like, Fair redacted. And, redacted. Uh, interplanetary Man of Mystery. <laughs> and. Well, that's, sorry. I the other names. And, and I think, I think <laughs> that leads me to the second thing I think is a key strength is they kept it simple enough that you can apply your own, <laughs> your own story to it. So this is, a, this is sort of like a skirmish module for 40K. And although it is set on Armageddon in this box set, you can just use your imagination and put anything else you want into it to make it sort of theme the way you want. Because there is no, like I said earlier, there is no trading post. There is no like special items that you can find that make this rooted in the third Armageddon war. It's just, you got your kill teams, I got my kill teams. And when you start mis mixing in this sort of like day one DLC ones, which are all of the other races like Eldar and Tyranids and like um, Dark ne Necrons, yeah, Necrons Chaos, like space random stuff, you're, you're changing sort of like the tone and the theme to whatever you want it to be. And that means you can buy the models you want, you can tell the story you want, and whatever. And, and I think that's going to be the key strength here is um, it's going to be a game for everybody. It's got something new for people like me who've played this game before um, and something I think that's like familiar too, uh, which is kind of comforting because you're playing a game that you... you I, I didn't really have to learn the rules here. I just had to learn how these rules were being applied to this mission, which is pretty cool. And so now there's also some opportunities. And I think 
There's opportunities for, for, for down the road. I really hope they do more boxes like this. And I think that every time they do a new terrain kit that's themed a different world, they could just do a new box like this. So they could just use, like you said, do hive ship. Do some Tyranid terrain yep. and do a hive ship expansion. And Tyranids have it- versus Death Watch. That's it, you can have it be Death Watch. It could even be Guardsman. Like it could be whatever. Yeah, like that's, actually that's, it could be, no, it could be Eldar. Cause it could be, it could be the fall of uh, Eandon. Right, so it could literally be like Eldar terrain, like that crazy infested Eldar terrain and Tyranid terrain, and you have Tyranids fighting Eldar all for the craft world of Vienna, yeah. the infested craft world. Like, I'm just spitballing here, but this is a big opportunity for them to box up the terrain kits. This rule book is, is generic enough, and so is all the counters and stuff generic enough that you just pack them in again, um, change the cover, change the art, and you've got this game for a new audience. So if you're bummed you didn't get this box set and you're gonna be buying the, the soft cover rule book later on, I think there's a big opportunity for Games Workshop to do this. Keep playing the game, keep buying the boxes. I guarantee you'll see something more like this down the road where they just keep re like basically packaging units that already exist in with new terrain and new like features basically to make it feel like something different. Just tackle everywhere. That's it. Just keep talking about it. That's it. Well, if you like the game, uh, it, like you've already got the armies basically and, and you want to try and play it. I think that's an opportunity. And then the opportunity also exists, I think, to add more story. Because like I said, it is a double-edged sword. They've made it generic enough that it doesn't feel rooted anywhere. But sort of the great warband games of today, there's a lot of NPC moments, so like surprise things that happen in the game, and you could just expand that into the game by adding decks, decks of cards of like random encounters and stuff. Just those little one-off expansions that they do so well. Um, they've already got the deck of cards for the Spec Ops guys, which are super handy to have. You could very easily just do a little layer onto the game that makes it feel more like Armageddon, or oh, more like... Storm of War? Yeah, like the Maelstrom decks, yeah. Random objectives yeah. only make it encounters. Make or, it encounters. Or like weather. Yeah, like that's exactly. Yeah. One. yeah, environmental stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can have like, that kind of well, thing. There's sandstorms, all guns are reduced by 12. Yep. And like stuff like that. Yep, exactly. It's raining oil from the sky. There's a Promethean fire raging. Like it's what? whatever dark. it is. Like. <laughs> yeah, because that's because to be honest, that's that's where these games are awesome is when they surprise you. Because it's like playing a little a little RPG without a dungeon master and you have to have someone, some some kind of mechanic that adds in those like, oh, this is so cool, like aha Promethean moment. kind of touches that. We yeah, can go further. it does. By the way, I can go further. And that's, I think, the opportunity for this game is, is if they do little expansions like that, if you're listening, uh, that's the kind of thing I think that you can do to, project, to, to prolong the longevity of a game like this and also keep us playing it and keep us excited about it too. And of course, if you're the fans, it's the kind of things that you guys can add yourselves if you think it would be cool um, to, to basically add a new layer to the game. And of course, the last thing is the Inquisition. Everybody's going to try and play this game for Inquisitor 28, I'm pretty sure, or like mod to Inquisitor 28. Uh, and that's the only thing so far that isn't in here it's there's gray knights but there's no inquisition there's no inquisition and this of course that's the big like you could just I mean, do a box your that's guardsmen could just be an imperial guardsman they, absolutely oh no i'm not saying you couldn't like oh, you couldn't you fudge you couldn't fudge one of the lists into it faction. there's not a real faction of like of inquisitorial stuff but that could be a box by itself you could just have a box that's the the inquisition game basically and you have bits and pieces and stuff so they do come up with plastic Chaos stuff Demons for that and inquisition next box yeah yeah, exactly, something like that. So uh, those are really the, the sort of like thoughts I have on the game so far. Tons of fun. I'm super excited just to build some models for it, make the Spec Ops teams for it as well. Uh, I'm gonna crack open my old Space Hub kits and grab some of the cool Gene Stealers and stuff for my Gene Stealer cult. Um, I might even paint some like 20 year old metal old Gene Stealer cultist miniatures that I have because I have the old Jack Skidman ones and they're fantastic. Uh, and you're working on the old Guardsman party and they're specialists. Set of metal legs. <laughs> you gotta, I don't, I don't know anything about this. He's gonna make me read the stories, but I assume it's gonna be hilarious. And you guys who love the internet and are, and I won't wear a green shirt on the green screen on the green screen anymore. It's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tone that out. You yeah, don't have a giant you. hole through. Just, 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 just leave it. Just have, just have a giant hole. floating black like hole through your chest. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll not do that again next time. <laughs> it's gonna be funny. I'm gonna see what happens. I think I can just key it out. It'll be fine. So yeah, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll basically keep you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys for more of this in the future. I hope you enjoyed it. It was super fun to try out. Um, and yeah, get down to your store. If you do want to get a box copy of this, the best chance you have right now is heading to your local retail store, your local games workshop, get there early, get it off the shelf. They are still out there. It's just the online stock. It's all sold out. So tomorrow That's morning. the time when this posted video. It'll be Friday. Not when you watch it six months from now. That's right, yeah, it's, it's probably true. too late. And well, then you're checking eBay or something like that, but that's life. Um, or they may have printed more. We don't know. You know what I mean? It might come out, or they've got physical rule books and stuff too, and you're, just, you're buying the train individually. But yeah, get to your store if you are watching this uh, Friday, uh, the day before the game comes out, and get in line, and you'll probably get yourself a copy. So we'll see you next time for more of this. Till then, I'm Ash Zellin. Have a good one.